Are rim brakes even relevant in 2024? Actually, I think they're superior. Let's take a look. Hi everybody, Nick from Tririg here, and today I want to take you through a deep dive on one of our most popular products of all, the Omega One Aero Brake. But first, we need to talk about the elephant in the room, disc brakes versus rim brakes. A few years ago, a couple of large companies made this big push to force everyone onto disc brakes whether they wanted it or not. They wanted you to believe that disc brakes are the future. Yet a lot of people, especially those of us who are really data oriented, found that their old rim brakes and rim braking frames were in fact lighter, faster, and more reliable in the world of triathlon. Now don't get me wrong, disc brakes absolutely have a place, but in the world of triathlon they really aren't the ideal solution. Let's briefly address some of the myths or arguments related to the disc versus rim debate. First is braking power. Aren't disc brakes supposed to be stronger than rim brakes? Well, no. The problem is that at the time of this transition there were a lot of poorly designed aero rim brakes being asked to grip an all-carbon rim, so the comparison was unfair at best if not outright rigged. If you pick a strong rim brake, give it a good set of pads, and ask it to grip an alloy braking track, there is no appreciable difference in either power or modulation compared to discs. In my experience, properly designed carbon rims with the right pads can do pretty good as well, but for maximum power, especially in mixed weather, alloy is the top of the line. That's why disc rotors are metal and not carbon. So that leads us to question number two. Well, if I have to use an alloy brake track for maximum power on rim brakes, now aren't I adding weight to the system or compromising aerodynamics in some way? No and no. On the weight side, an alloy rim will be heavier than an all-carbon rim, that's true, but we aren't just comparing rims, we're comparing complete systems. Disc brake setups require larger hubs, the rotor itself, and significantly more spokes to withstand the torque. Once you compare complete systems, disc brakes are hundreds of grams heavier than their rim braking counterparts. And for that same reason, the aerodynamic comparison isn't even close. Again, disc brakes require more spokes, beefier hubs, and the rotor. And these things are exposed to the wind. The spokes are the worst offender, and there's no way to hide those. But even if you try and mitigate the brake, hub, and rotor with clever fairings, etc., you're still adding frontal area that wasn't there before. And then we get to maybe the most interesting argument. Well, if we remove the rim brake, can we potentially design frames so much faster that they offset the losses we're talking about? Well, I'm a guy who designs frames for a living, and there was nothing about the Tri-Rig Omni that was in any way hampered by the presence of the rim brake. And looking around at the wider industry, I'd say no one else has really cracked that nut either. There are vanishingly few examples of radical bike design where the absence of a rim brake made any appreciable difference. In fact, I can only think of three. The very radical Koo bike is one, and the sort of triple column designs of the Specialized Shiv Disc and the Kadex Tri-Bike are the other two. And it's not clear that any of these are in fact faster than the best bikes out there. Not one company has demonstrated or even claimed a substantial aerodynamic savings from switching to disc brakes. Turns out, rim brakes were never a liability, and when done right, they're actually an advantage. That brings us, of course, to Omega One. This brake is the culmination of over a decade of aerodynamic design, from our original early prototypes through several generations of production brakes, and finally, perfected. We've always made fast brakes, which hide within the frontal profile of your bike's fork and head tube, adding no frontal area to the system. But with Omega-1, we actually reached a new threshold, with the advanced aerodynamic shaping that actually makes the bike faster than if you didn't have any brake on it at all. Let me say that one more time. Adding Omega-1 to your bike's frame makes it more aerodynamic than if you didn't have any brake on at all. We designed it that way with computational fluid dynamics in the computer. We validated that in the wind tunnel on multiple frames. And independent third parties like Jim Manton of Aerosports have corroborated our findings in testing with real world athletes. But more than just a pretty face, Omega-1 is strong. It's as strong as any brake we've ever tested, absolutely shattering the ISO standard for braking power. And it all starts with the mechanical formula that we've refined for over a decade. 
With Omega-1, we maximized everything that provides stopping power, including the leverage from the arms, the stiffness of each component, and the total cable pull, while refining the modulation of that power, using careful shaping on the cable wedge that gently transitions from high pull to linear pull throughout the brake's lever throw. To design Omega-1, we took a brand new approach compared to any of its predecessors. First, we took all of the mechanical specifications and put them in the computer as reference points or sketches inside of our basic 3D model. From there, we wrapped all of those points in the smallest possible physical shape while simultaneously honing that shape into a cohesive aerodynamic form. Finally, we took that form and carved out each subcomponent from it. This is actually backwards from how we designed all other generations of Omega brakes. For those earlier brakes, we would start from nothing and build up each part until it created the final form. For Omega-1, we start with the final form and chop it up into its individual pieces from there. This was the first product we designed using this final form first method, but it wasn't the last. Sigma-1 was designed with the same approach, and we have some other things in the works where this method was ideal as well. So what do we have at the end of the day? Simply put, the strongest, best modulating, most aerodynamic brake on the market, period. It will outperform absolutely any brake out there while offering the easiest installation and adjustment. No need to get a syringe, a bleed kit, and rubber gloves to install this brake. No need to deal with the dreaded disc brake rub from impossibly small tolerance stack problems. If you want a closer brake grab, you just adjust one of the two set screws on either side of the brake arms. Each one offers continuous adjustment to let you get as close or as far as you want from the brake track. Getting ready to travel? Easy. Just pop off the front plate and wedge, everything comes free. When you get to where you're going, you put it back on, no adjustment needed. Got an old frame with TRP Canty studs like an old Shiv or an old felt bike? No problem. Omega One comes with the adapter to use it there. In short, Omega One is our idea of the perfect triathlon brake. It does everything you need without adding unnecessary bulk or drag. Ask anyone who's used our brakes over the past decade, they'll tell you it's one of the best upgrades they ever made. For lots more info and photos, or to buy your own Omega One brake, check out the link in the description below, or just head to tririg.com. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.